Hi, what we're going to do today is we're going to be making a bobblehead out of somebody. And we'll begin right away. First thing I'm going to do is come over here to the original layer. I'm going to make a duplicate of it. And we shall turn the original layer off. I will click the layer, original layer. I will go down here and I will create a new layer between them both. And this new layer I am going to let me turn this off. I'm going to turn this into a white background. You'll see why I'm doing that in a minute. Click white, paint bucket, and we'll create a back, white background. Turn that off for a second. Okay, here we go. We have the layer we're going to be working with. We're going to go to the quick select tool. And we're going to be isolating our subject from the background the best we can. Okay. Let's get his head, let's get his body, his arm. Let's get his other arm in there. We'll get the rest of his body. We'll go down his leg, his ankle, his foot. Which he has in a very strange position there. Both feet he has in a strange position. Okay, here we go. We're going down the other foot. And the quick select tool. Uh, couldn't figure his hair out from the background there. So I'm going to go to the far right button here, which will unselect the area we don't want selected. And we'll clean that up a little bit. And I think that's, that's pretty good. It's not perfect. But then again, I'm not going to be perfect with this because I just want to show you basically how to do this. We're not going to be anal here because you've got better things to do with your time than watch me anally work on this thing to absolute perfection. Okay, now that we have him selected there, uh, we're gonna come up here, we're gonna go to the selection, and we're going to inverse the selection. I'm not gonna be using the uh, keys on the uh, uh, computer to do any shortcuts, because I want you to see exactly what I'm doing. I want you to read the things as I'm doing it, so there's no mistake. So we inverse the background. Now that that's all isolated and inversed, I will delete. There we go background is gone. We're going to come back to the quick select tool, go to the middle button here. Uh, we're going to work in here and get rid of this area. Delete. Don't have to do an inverse because we're doing that directly. We're going to come up here. We're going to select this area in here. And once again, boom. We're going to get rid of that with a delete. Okay. Now, the reason why I use this um, white background here is because Sometimes when you do this, some residual gets left behind and you can't see it unless you have a white background. So I have that white background. I can see what I'm doing here and I'll use my erase tool and I'll get rid of some of this. Again, I am not going to be perfect here. I'm not going to be anal and getting rid of every single little thing and making this absolutely perfect. I'll leave that for you to do when you do your own thing there. But just to give you an idea, using the erase tool or whatever you want to use to clean up your image as much as you possibly can. Uh, I'll also give him just the tiniest bit of a trim with his hair so it doesn't look too odd. This was his bed head. Okay, let me get that over here. Let me get rid of that side there. Just to round them out a little bit. And over here, just going to clean this up a little bit, excuse me. Just a little tiny bit and around his ear and I'm not going to go any further than that okay there we go next thing we're going to do is we're going to come to the white background here we're going to click black use the pink bucket and now we are going to let me get rid of this image for a second we're going to turn the whole background black the reason why we do that is because everything looks a lot better on black and it gets rid of a multitude of sins including the rough edges now that we have that done, we're going to go to the image we're working with for the subject, and we're going to isolate his head. And here is his head, and here is the isolation. We're going to cut off his head. Okay, close as possible. What we will do is we will do a copy, and we will do a paste. And now we have, don't worry about that double exposure look. We're going to click off the original image, we're going to come to his head here. We're going to use the erase tool. And we only want his head. We don't want his neck. So we're going to erase as much 
of the neck as possible. And clean that up as much as we possibly can. We'll be as careful as we can. Again, I am not going to go anal on you doing this. And we got just the outline of his face as much as we possibly can. Okay, good. Get rid of this here. All right, we got his face. Now we're going to click this off. We're going to go back to his body. And what we want to do is we want to get rid of his face here because we already have his face. And we don't want one face accidentally overlapping on the other face. So let's open up our erase tool and let's get rid of as much face as we possibly can here. And uh, Henry VIII would be really, really happy with me doing this creepy decapitation job here. There we go. There we go. Get rid of that. Now what we want to do, bobbleheads usually have this long neck that the bobblehead sits on top of. So what we want to do is we want to elongate his neck. What we want to do is we're going to come over here. We're going to go to the magic lasso. And we're going to try to get uh, some neck here. This doesn't have to be perfect. You'll see why. And Oops. I don't know how that happened, but there we go. Now that we have that, once again, we're going to come up here. We're going to go to copy. We're going to come up here. We're going to go to paste. We now have his neck here. And what we want to do is I will use the transform and I will use the warp tool, I guess. And I will elongate his neck as much as possible because we want to have a nice long bobblehead neck to work with. This is really freaky, but it works. Okay, we'll set this in place, apply it, there we go. Now what I want to do is, being we're going to be working with this body and this neck and this background, I have everything else turned off and I am going to merge these two together. I'm going to merge the two visibles together. Merge visible. Okay, we're going to turn on the head now. And you can see he's uh, got a very long neck here. Click on this. Now, being this is a bobble head, we're going to have to make his head bobbly. And bobble heads usually have a very big exaggerated head. They're like a caricature of the person you're dealing with, which is what bobble heads are supposed to be. Okay. And you can see why I wanted that neck long. So we don't wind up having his head down here. We have his head up here. Okay, so we have that set. We have that set in the neutral position. We're applying it. There we go. Next step we're going to do is we're going to be making um, a, copies of this head. And I will usually like to work with uh, 12 copies because the animation is going to involve 12 frames. So I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to call it number two. I'll rename this original one number one. Now I'm going to pause this and I want to do up to 12. Okay. And then after I get the 12 copies done, we'll be right back. Hang on. Okay, we're back. As you can see here, I have 12 duplicates made of the uh, head here. And I have them all numbered. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to turn off these, turn off these things. And we're going to start working with the head motion. Okay, so here's the head number one, which is going to be the neutral position. And then head two. I'm going to turn on number two. I'm going to come up here to edit. I'm going to go to transform. I'm going to go to rotate. And I shall rotate the head a little bit this way. And then I'm going to set it in place. 
I'm leaving the other one on because I want to see the one layer over the other so I can get an idea how well this is going. I'll go to three and then I'm going to go to edit. I'm going to go to transform. I want to go to rotate and I'm going to rotate this one a little bit past. You can see by the airs the direction this is going in. Okay, then I'm going to set this in place. Good. I will go to the next layer, four. I will go to transform, rotate. Now this one I'll bring a little bit more, but I want to shift this a little bit. He's got to bobble a little bit. Okay, there we go. And we will set this in place. Okay, now I'm going to pause again and I'm going to now let the head go back in the other direction, swing this way, and then back in the neutral position. And when I get that done, we'll come back on and you'll see how I, you'll see what I mean. Hold on. Okay, we're back. I uh, tilted the heads. I actually added two more layers. I did a 13 and a 14. Uh, just to make it look a little better. So let's give you an idea of what this will look like. Frame one, two, three. Get the idea how the animation is going to work. Four, five, six. You get the idea. You get the idea. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to turn on the first head along with the body and we're going to begin the actual animation process and the way we're going to do that is we're going to come up here to windows or window window and we're going to press timeline you're going to see this little bar is going to come up it's going to say create frame animation that's the one we want the other one is create video timeline we don't want video timeline we want create frame animation click that and you see the first image was set in the frame. Okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to unclick number one. We're going to click number two. And down here, you're going to see a little button here and it says duplicate selected frames. Press it. Then we're going to, come on, be good. Come back down. We're going to turn off number two. We're going to turn on number three. And again, we're going to press this little button down here it opens up these little things here up on top these little blank things leave them alone uh, and then you're just gonna have to come down again uh, to the frames you're working with turn off three turn on four press come down turn off four turn on five press come down Turn off five, turn on six, press, come down. We're going to do this all the way up to 14. On seven, come on down, turn off seven, turn on eight, press, come down, Turn off eight, turn on nine. Just stick with me, stick with me folks. Not too much longer. Press, come on down. We're gonna turn off nine, turn on 10. Click, come down, turn off 10, turn on 11. Click, come down. Turn off 11, turn on 12. Click, come down. Just hang with me, folks. One more, one more, one more. Turn off 13, turn on 14, and click. Okay, we have all 14 frames set up here. Now, if I did this correctly, when I press the animate button, you should see the bobblehead in motion. There you go, see it? Boom, boom. 
Now, over here, you're gonna see a little button that says, oh, come on button. See, it says once over here, all the way down here on the left, right below the second frame. You wanna to go to that little arrow and you wanna say forever. You can let the animation just go once, you can make it go three times, or you can make it go forever. I'm gonna make it go forever, why not? It's a bobblehead. We'll press play, and there you go. There you go. You see the bobblehead in motion. Okay, we'll stop it. Bring it back to the first frame. And uh, you'll notice over here, underneath each of the frames, it says zero sec, zero sec, zero sec. That's because you can press on the little arrow there and you can have a delay set in. No delay, one tenth of a second, five tenths, 20 or uh, 10 seconds, or not 20, two seconds, one second, two seconds, five seconds, 10 seconds, or other if you wanna put in more time. We're just gonna leave it go. We're gonna leave it go to zero seconds, no delay. That's the way bobbleheads work to me, for me anyway. So what I'm gonna do is two steps now. First step is I'm gonna come up to file and I'm gonna say save as, and I'm gonna save the actual work. See, I have a few of them over here. I'm gonna have the actual work file and I'm gonna call it Bob Head One. I wanna save that as a PSD. Now that is not gonna give you the animation. That's just gonna give you the workspace that you have saved. Now we're going to save the actual animation itself. To save the actual animation. Then what you do is you go to file and you come down here to save for web. Save for web. Click that. You're going to see a little screen come up here. And this is an awfully big file that I'm working with. So it's going to take a little tiny bit of time just to load this thing up. Okay. And then I want to press save. And we'll call this bobhead1 GIF. There you go. And that'll actually save the file. GIF file, or some people call it a GIF. I think the man who invented it calls it a GIF, as in Jiffy, Jiffy peanut butter. He says GIF. I still say GIF. What the heck? Okay, so we're saving it. Just for your information, even though you have this entire thing worked out, you can still uh, size it. I think you can still size it. So let's see, image size, if it's too big, you can bring it down, let's say to 600 if you want to. Whoops, wait a minute, I'm gonna constrain the, pro the proportions. So let's say I bring it down to 800, let's say 800. Boom, okay. You can bring the entire thing down, so you can shrink it up if it's too big. That's why I like to keep the PDF file. Let's say you do it and you try to upload it somewhere and it says file too big, you can open this up you can shrink it down, then you can save it once again as uh, save for web, which will save it as a uh, GIF file. Notice how fast that loaded now. And you can see it here instead of it being off the uh, grid. And we'll save this and we'll call this eight hundred, I think I put it for. Eight hundred. Okay. Save. That's it, folks. That is how you make an animated bobblehead with Photoshop. And again, I did it real quick. So uh, it's not the most perfect uh, thing, but you can make it yours as perfect as you want it to be. And if you get this technique down, you can do a lot of animation with a lot of things. It doesn't just have to be a bobblehead. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. I hope you give it a try. I hope it works really well for you. You can always write to me if you have a question and uh, I'll do my best to answer it for you. Thank you for watching. I'll ask you to please subscribe and I will see you the next time. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.